And I let him off the hook all the time. He makes countless videos about me, whatever. He's speaking his mind. Now, this is something that I've known about for over about a month. But I have not want to put this information out there and I was using it as a joke only. Even though I knew what I knew, I was using it as a joke only because honestly, I felt bad about it. The first thing I want to say is I'm hoping that this is the last video I have to do on Greg Doucette on a personal level. But I realize after doing this, and I've been on and off doing this more the past year, uh, after doing this for almost 10 years, I realize that sometimes people aren't going to like the things you, you say and the things you do because part, the biggest part of this channel is that when these guys in the fitness industry, mostly, I covered other sports, but mostly in the fitness industry, when they do dumb shit, unethical shit, things that are wrong, I make videos about them. That's not the only stories on here, but a lot of times, those are ones that are on here, and for some reason, those are the ones that get the most views because people always want to see bad shit or hear bad news. So saying that, things end up sometimes personal which is what you guys are seeing now between me and Greg Doucette. And I'm hoping this is the last video that I'm going to have to do like I said before. Now, I never said I was a perfect person. I never tried to be a perfect person. I say a lot of things that people don't like. Big part of this channel is I roast people. I do satire type comedy. I curse. I say a lot of things that people may get offended by. And if you do, I don't suggest you watch my channel. This is not the right channel for you. Maybe you should go watch the Disney channel or some educational content, but that's not what you're going to find here. And I'm not going to change who I am because people, some people may get offended by. It. Now, remember when Greg Doucette, he came out with his Turkesterone product again. And he searched the entire globe for a place where he can find genuine turkesterone because he believes this product is the best thing in the world, which maybe it is, but we haven't seen it yet, right? I give him the benefit of the doubt. We don't know, right? So he searched the entire globe and he found it in a country called Uzbekistan. Now, because he's pissed off at me, right? He wants to do this whole big expose on me to justify the actions of him when he was talking bad and sexual things about the bikini girls. And so if you have a nice bum to start with in bikini, you can basically be a bikini competitor. You might even be a pro. And here's the thing, smash, all of them are smash. So how are we picking the best bikini girl? Like next up bikini class, smash. Every single girl, I don't care if they're 10th place, fifth, whatever places they have, I could argue that all of them deserve to win. It's excessively subjective, because let's face it, it's like, are you sexy or are you not? Like, really? I can't see your back, I can't see your lower back. Then I see a booty, I see a nice one, and it's round, and it's very delicious looking. It's, sorry, it is. It's amazing, girls' booties, who doesn't like that? How many girls don't have lip filler? Because unless you have a nice juicy lips like me, like I could make a good woman, you know, like I have lips. So he searched and searched the entire internet to find something he could possibly put in a video that will paint me in a bad light. So you know what he did? He found something that in 2018, another 120 million people actually over that has seen, which is my prank videos. My prank videos that I did with Eric Konefsky, um, Cassidy Campbell, my channel. Some of them were on Big DOS, his Facebook channel, which gets a ton of views. In 2018 alone, over 120 million people saw these videos. And that's what built my name, which is why I have a comedy background, okay? 
and part of why that comedy carries on to this channel. Now, I haven't really done that many prank videos. I still do one here and there on Eric's channel, but I don't do much anymore because the world has changed since the C word happened. People get offended. You can't just go up to people and say things. Somebody might shoot you. It's a different world. I got older and I transitioned to doing this channel again. Now, in those prank videos, okay, I played one of the characters I played, Mr. Wellington, who was known as the richest man in Arizona. I was the father of Cassidy Campbell, the perverted father, and the mafia boss who controlled the Russian mafia. Eric Konevsky, Vlad, he was my employee in these videos. And in some of these videos, we even pretended that we buried bodies in basements because we took these people out. But now, does that mean I'm a killer because I played a character in a comedy prank video? Am I a perverted father because I played the father of Cassidy Campbell? No, because it's an act. It's a character. It's make-believe. I just filmed, actually, a movie where I play a limo driver. Am I a limo driver in real life? I don't have problems with limo drivers. But no, I'm not a limo driver. Again, because it's an act. It's a character. It's make-believe. But Greg wanted to try to paint the picture by taking my act to say John is the worst person to ever exist. I'm going to not just show, but prove how bad John Bravo really is. He's made dozens of videos on Coach Greg. He loves to do the drama about me. Nothing wrong with that. It's great for the channel. But I just want to show who the man himself really is. Now, some people may not like pranks. They don't think they're funny. They think they're harassing people and everyone has a right to their own opinion, right? And times have changed, like I said before. But they were very successful and they are what built my name, which allows me to continue doing what I'm doing now. And if you read the comments on all those videos, 97%, I believe, is the uh, positive rate on those, on those channels, on my videos. People liked them and enjoyed them. Go read the comments for yourself. Now, in Greg's search and hunt for the worst thing he could find about me, you know what he did? He found a prank, one prank that I did, pretending to be an Arab. But guys, remember, I am Arab, 100% Arab. So if I want to play a character as an Arab, it's not racist because I'm Arab, right? So I played an Arab character where I go around and I'm looking for a Sharmuta. And you guys know that word? I use that word all the time on this channel. I call girls that all the time. It's a joke. It's part of what I do, right? Now, that prank, it was never meant for the American market. The title was in Arabic. The video was in Arabic with American subtitles, right? It was meant for the Middle East because the type of comedy in it, I never expected American people to understand the joke. And the whole thing is to do it so it's a joke, right? Right? But it was never meant for the American people, which is why it was designed that way. In fact, not even all the Middle East would find that prank funny. Mostly Lebanese people will. And that's where I targeted in that video. And that was the only video I did as a character, even though many people have asked for me to do it again. So he used that video as a way to paint me, like I said, as a really bad, sexist, horrible person to justify the actions that he did. But you know what the big difference is? Mine was an act, a character played in a video that was meant to be comedy. Wait till you see all the horrendous things he said about women. And so let's see what John Bravo himself has said about women. Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, uh, it's time to show John Bravo hating on women harder than last time. Are you ready? Where is this Charmuta? Where is Charmuta? Woman, American Charmuta. Where is that? W, uh, quote, or. He's pranking people. He's trying to be funny, but imagine what that does to you. If you've been approached by a stranger, he starts talking about the mafia, trying to look for an American whore. What might that do? Would you trust this man walking up to you saying, I need a shimuka? I need American woman? I'm looking for an American rhymes with a boar? 
to have S-E-X with? How dare you, John Bravo? And then you have the audacity, the nerve, to criticize my comments. You're a simp. Isn't it a little bit hypocritical for John Bravo to criticize me what I said about bikini competitors when he's doing this, which is worse. What he did was real life, pretending to be a judge, which we didn't know he wasn't, and sexualizing women in the IFBB bikini division. And like I said many times, most of us guys say the same shit. But as a judge, as a person who's a, who's a big personality in this business, you got to watch what you say. And he tried to compare the two, and comparing the two is apples to oranges. No, John Bravo, he gets the pass. He can say whatever he wants. And so who would you rather have at your next bodybuilding competition? John Bravo or Coach Greg? So if I'm a bad person for making these pranks, for cursing, saying Sharmuta, saying a lot of things, asshole, on this channel a lot, meant in a satire way. Like I said earlier, don't watch my channel if this offends you because this is not going to be the channel for you. Now he goes to point out that I made many videos about him. I made many videos about him, just like I've done a lot of people in this industry, because they do stupid shit. They weren't attack at him personally, but when you do dumb shit, unethical shit in this industry, I'm gonna make videos about you. So my advice would be, if you don't want me making videos, don't do stupid shit. So now let's talk a little bit about my credibility and, in spe and specifically the video that I made uh, on Greg Desette, where I made some jokes calling him a sugar daddy because he was at dinner with these girls on the table with their titties out and was a very expensive five-star place. I made some jokes. It turns out he's not happy with it. Now, before I say what I want to say, as men, as guys, we all think a certain way. And we all, almost all of us, do some dumb shit in our life to chase women, to get women. We do all kinds of crazy shit, right? All of us, none of us are innocent when it comes to this. But why was Greg so offended when I said he looks like a sugar daddy? In his video, he says I have sugar daddies and accusing me and telling me that they are my escorts. The injustice of this, the fact that he can sit there and make a video and criticize me. He doesn't know me, and I let him off the hook all the time. He makes countless videos about me, whatever. He's speaking his mind. Now, this is something that I've known about for over about a month when I made that video. It was just shortly before I made that video. I think it was uh, sometime uh, last month. So I've known about this for a month, but I have not want to put this information out there and I was using it as a joke only. Even though I knew what I knew, I was using it as a joke only because honestly, I felt bad about it. And I said I would never put this information out there, even as much as my issues with Greg Doucette. But I would only do it if he tried to put a stain on my credibility because like I said, this is something I've done for 10 years. I am known for being credible. And I'm not going to let anybody bully me or try to take away my credibility in the eyes of the people that are watching the channel. Saying that, he hasn't stopped talking about me on his Instagram stories, on his YouTube uh, page as well. And he hasn't stopped talking about me specifically saying I'm a liar about a lot of things. It's rare that I meet someone as narcissistic as this John guy. It's absolutely amazing. Keep it going. I'm that famous for you. You love me so much that you have to do videos about me and you can't even get them right. I'll just say anything about Coach Greg and people are going to watch it. And you're doing videos about me and lying about it in nearly every single one, all lies. And you keep going on. When you lie about what he's doing, when you accuse him of having, uh, what, escorts and prostitutes when I'm out in Colombia, when that's my chef and her sister and her friend, how do you think those girls feel? How do you feel about yourself right now? You're accusing my friends of being prostitutes and escorts. You think they like that? Oh, it's just skits. I'm just being a comedian. Walk up to a woman and you say, I'm looking for a whore. I want to fuck whore. I want to have sex. I want to marry. Oh, it's a skit. It's funny. 
That's very distasteful. Your jokes aren't all that funny. Now, when he's talking about the sugar daddy stuff, notice he only brings up these pictures about their, these girls in Colombia with one of them as being his chef, which I knew. When I made my video, I never mentioned the Colombia girls. I mentioned the girls on the table in the five-star restaurant because those are what looked like to me as a sugar daddy situation. I don't know for a fact, but that's what it looked like, right? To me and mostly everybody else who was watching. And accusing me and telling me that they are my escorts. They are my friends. Think of it. If you had somebody living in your house, a chef that you've been working for many years and she invites you to your home and you have to read these comments, imagine what that can do. It's almost as if they that just because I'm a famous person that they can say anything they want and it won't affect you. Well, for the most part, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. But imagine these three having to read those comments and I'm not going to read them. Some of them, horrible. Shame on you for saying it. And so to compare me and say that I'm like those people, how dare you? How dare you? You don't know me. But notice every time he talks about it, he never actually mentions what I showed in the video, only the Columbia girls while he was on vacation with his friends. And I want you guys to remember that when I show you what I'm going to show you. He also tried to paint himself out like he's a victim. People were attacking him and the woman in the comments when he posted pictures of him and the girls in Columbia. He wanted people to think that he's a victim in all of this and we should all feel bad for him. Now, when I made that joke in that video, there was, like I said, there was something behind that that made me say it. There was actually truth behind my statement. Not 70%, not 80%. 110% proof backing up what I said, which again, this is something that I actually feel bad to show. Before I get started, for some of you who may know, some of you who may not know, there's a website called Seeking Arrangements. And on that website is where rich men would go and post their profile and young girls, older girls, whatever the case may be, go on there. And they're looking for a rich man to take care of them. And the men on their profiles show how much money they make and the girls decide which ones they want to go out with. And in reading uh, about this company, because if you guys go online, uh, go online, you can read a bunch of things about the company. Uh, there was transactions going on and all a bunch of things. And, and you can go on the internet and find out for yourself about the company. But that's what the company was about. They recently changed the name to Seeking.com. But it's still known for those same exact things. Now I'm going to connect you to my computer because I'm going to show you something. So right here, is the website seeking.com, which I have a fake profile on. And on this website, if you go and you search Halifax and you put a close distance, you put between 45 and 48 years old. And now stay with me here, okay? Stay with me. You put 45, 48 years old, you hit search. It's gonna show a bunch of results. And when we scroll down, we see a bunch of people and then, right there in the middle, we see our friend, Greg Doucette. 48 years old, Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. He says, are you ready? And remember now, there's a geolocation turned on. Okay, I'm going to get into this in a second. There's a geolocation turned on, which shows your location. And when you click the profile, there's Greg's profile. And then it also shows the recent location, Canada. Date created December 17th, 2023. Remember, I made my video just a month ago when I found out. Okay, so just remember that. Keep it in your mind. Last active February 16th, so he hasn't been using it. Now, Greg's info. Looking for women. White, smokes, non-smoker, drinks, social drinker. Net worth, Canadian 6.8 million. Remember when I said... On the website, you show how much money you're worth because this is how you attract the woman. Yes, they're trying to rebrand it. They're trying to show that, you know, get women on there that have money. And this is a place where they all can meet, which may be the case. I'm not saying just because Greg is on here that this makes him a sugar daddy. He could just be looking for successful women. So don't take that out of context here. 
Okay, we don't know what he's using this for. and I'm never going to make an accusation on that. But this is his profile, and I'm going to tell you how I know. So, Canadian, 6.8 million, height, 5'6", annual income, more than 1.4 million. I'm going to say God bless Greg for making this money. Because what he's done, I'm going to give him credit here, what he's done is unheard of. And I will never take that away from him. And I will never hate on a person like that. Education, graduate, uh, degree, single. About me, very unique, unexpected, different, interesting, deep thinking, has his shit together. Seeking, active lifestyle, discretion, flexible schedule, no strings attached, open relationship, true love. Someone who has time to have fun and not have to stress over anything, I guess in his English words. You click his profile here, it shows his picture, and this is a unique picture. This is not a picture that you're going to find online anywhere else. This is one that he specifically used to make this profile. So I know many people are going to be saying, you know, how do we know this account is not fake? Anyone can make a profile, put Greg's picture, etc., right? Stay with me here because I have something coming. Like I said, the first thing is it has a unique photo specifically for this app that you're not going to find anywhere else. The geolocation is not something that can easily be faked. And then the date created is in December, the middle of December. I didn't make my video until last month when I found out about this. Now, the biggest key in this is that this account is actually linked to Greg Doucette's personal Gmail email address. This is the one that he uses for all his personal things, and that's the email address that's tied to this account, which I'm going to censor a portion of it to not give out his public information. Now, I have many other supporting documents and information that links him to this account, showing it's genuine and it's 110% him. And I can't show all of that publicly because it would be a privacy issue. But my lawyer, I have to take this measure because we know how sue happy Greg is, but I'm showing fact and you can't sue for fact. And he can go and try to delete all these things, but I have the documents that I need. And my lawyer has seen it all and he approved what I am doing and what I'm saying. And you can never sue somebody for stating fact, no matter how much you want to. Now, like I said, this is indeed 110%. I'm not going to put my credibility doing this for 10 years on the line here. This is 110% Greg's profile. But saying that, this doesn't make him a bad person. This doesn't make him a creep. This doesn't make him any of those things. I simply use this as a joke, right? Because we don't know what, this, what he's doing on this website. We know its reputation. We know what it's known for. But that doesn't mean that's what he used it for. And I'm not going to put that on him. But I needed to explain myself because he's making me out to be a liar. And I'm not going to let anybody make me out to be a liar. So I had to show where I came up with the information that I decided to put in a joke that he keeps on, that he keeps denying to make me look like I'm not a person that can be trusted. Now, Greg, you stated that I insinuated in a video that you were doing illegal drugs. I've been on TRT for over 10 years, and it's done so much for my life to make me feel younger, stronger. Now, I recently signed with a company called Live Forever Health. I'm going to put a link in my coupon code in the bio. And this company, you know, everything's been so seamless, you know, and I tested this out. You know, I would never recommend things to people unless I'm using it, unless I tested the whole process. And the process couldn't be easier. They sent me a kit to send my blood back in the mail. Uh, they got my results. We went, I met with the doctor, with the nurse practitioner. We went over my results and then they gave me my prescription, sent me the testosterone in the mail. So it couldn't be easier. And again, this is a company I trust that I actually did the whole process with and pricing is competitive similar to everybody else who does it but this is a company that I use and a company again that I trust now in my video I clearly said I don't know what it is you're doing but it must be something and I got this idea from your own comment section of your own video people said oh this guy he looks like he's on something he's not okay and anyone who has a brain cell Looking at that video, looking at your eyes, looking how you slurred your speech, looking at the things that you said that you normally don't say, talking in your regular voice. 
Anyone with a brain cell watched that would assume the same thing. Like, and um, um, after that, how many girls don't have lip filler? Because unless you have a nice juicy lips like me, like I could make a good woman, you know, like I have lips. You could have been on cough medicine. You could have been on Tylenol, Advil, NyQuil. NyQuil makes you loopy. I never said specifically what I think that you were taking. Other people can assume what they want, but that has nothing to do with me and what I said in my video. In this video, he insinuates that I'm a cocaine addict. I'm literally very sick. I go to the doctor multiple times. I'm in Canada. Healthcare is not the same as the United States. When I'm sniffing, I'm sniffing up snot and phlegm because I'm very sick. And then I make a video and you think I'm smoking something because I look tired. Meanwhile, I'm hardly getting any sleep because I'm so sick. And so when I make videos and people accuse me of doing illegal things, illegal, doing illegal substances, for example, sniffing creatine or smoking that green stuff, and I'm not doing it, don't appreciate it, it's illegal. So Greg, you keep on saying in your video, how wrong it is for somebody to accuse somebody of taking something illegal, illegal drugs. They can go to jail, prison, right? But I never did that. Like I said, I never accused you of those things. And I certainly don't think it's smart to make illegal accusations of something that someone hasn't done. You can criticize my body of work, criticize what I'm saying. What have I said? But to make up lies, that is going too far. You do not lie about what I've done or what I am doing. But have you looked at yourself, your entire career? how you built your entire career. What was it on? It was on accusing others of taking illegal drugs. Yeah, in Canada, you can get away with it. In the United States, steroids are illegal. How many people's lives have you affected by accusing them of taking steroids? So the words you're using now, saying this about people accusing others of illegal things, don't those same rules apply to you? And I'd be really careful because when you say a guy's high on coke when he does a video, when he's not, when you lie about what he's doing. So to close the video, I want to say something. As a man, we all make mistakes. I've spoken about this many times. And the biggest men are the ones who know how to admit wrong, how to know how to say sorry. You've done a lot of things to people. I don't even want to get into it in this video. It's orchestral. How many millions of dollars did you make off that? It was bunk product. Did you give people refunds? Did you give them credit? Well, now you're releasing it again. No, you haven't. Did you say sorry for it? No, you didn't. You changed the label to a different name to justify what you did. Did you say sorry to me for plagiarizing my Sam Sulik video, the original one that has 600,000 views now that I sent to you when I was trying to be your friend? to give you an idea to make a video. And instead of just taking the topic to put your own spin on it, you plagiarized my video from beginning to end. And you didn't say sorry to me either. You didn't say sorry to me when you threatened to sue me for making a video about the Trend Twins not being happy with your training and made me take the video down, which now, if you look at what's going on between him and the Trend Twins, it's coming out to be true, which is what I felt at the time I had information that said, what I had was true about his training methods, but I felt bad for Greg. I was trying to be his friend at the time, so I took the video down. So Greg, don't be that type of guy who won't admit wrong, who's arrogant, who will never say sorry. Because if you look up the definition of what that type of person is, you're never gonna wanna be that person. This is fun for me. If it wasn't fun, why would I do it? I'm literally making millions of dollars a year without even trying. I don't even have to try. The drama, it helps, it sells, it's fun. This is entertaining for me.